Canada are set to take on Japan tomorrow in their last and final friendly as they prepare and head into the World Cup for the first time since 1986. And this is an amazing Japanese side that Canada is set to take on tomorrow, a side that sits 24th in the FIFA World Rankings and have an unbelievable squad as well with a great mix of experience and quality at the top level and also a side in Japan that has competed in the last 7 World Cups. This is a brilliant Japanese side that Canada is set to take on tomorrow and probably Canada's biggest test yet heading into the World Cup. Bigger than Uruguay, bigger than Mexico, and of course USA, as Japan dominated USA in their one of their most recent friendlies two matches ago, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But before we do, guys, make sure to drop down below, hit that sub button for all the best Canadian men's national team content, daily uploads, whether it's player profiles, match reactions, previews, or five things we learned, or just general Canadian men's national team news. It's all on the channel. So hit that sub button, drop a like, and let me know what you guys think down below in the comments about Japan squad what Canada might be looking like and just your general thoughts going into tomorrow but we're gonna kick it off talking about Canada as Canada has a great opportunity to play top quality opposition going into the World Cup and by far their biggest opponent heading into this World Cup yes Mexico and USA are obviously ranked higher than Japan they're great squads but they ma they match up no different than Japan does Japan is a brilliant side who are much better than USA and they absolutely dominated USA when they went and played them a, a window ago in the international break. They played them off the park. Having only 43 possession against USA, Japan was brilliant, winning 2-0 against the USA and having 15 shots and 2 big chances. Japan is an unbelievable side who by far match up brilliantly for Canada as they head into the World Cup. And I expect Canada to head into this game wanting to give Japan possession. As Canada are set to play against Belgium and Croatia, some of the best sides in world football at holding the ball, controlling the midfield, and truly winning that midfield battle. Canada are going to look to probably defend, sit on the back foot, and look to hit Japan on the counter, which they'll be doing at the World Cup against Belgium, Croatia, and probably Morocco a little bit, but not even close to as much as a Belgium and Croatia match. This Japanese game is going to be a huge challenge for Canada, as Canada sometimes has struggled on the transition. And Canada are looking to play against a team here in Japan who are unbelievable at transitional football. They're quick, they're fast, they're very good at executing and have some top quality players up on the attacking side of the pitch as well. They don't have some elite finishers, but they're still a brilliant side at transitional football. Peter Glindo interviewed John Herbman today, and John Herbman had to say this. They have one of the best records in transition. They hit in this sort of 100 percentiles when you look at radars for that their transitional plays their goals scored from transition the xg from transitions is very very high so we know their pressing intensity is one of the best in the world and they can do it for 90 minutes John Herbman had a brilliant interview with Peter Glindo, and it's amazing. Read it up if you guys haven't at Peter Glindo Twitter, and it is truly amazing. He tells a lot in that interview about Japan. But guys, we all know Japan is a brilliant transitional squad, and Canada will have to cope and adapt with that, as we've struggled on the transition quite a bit sometimes at qualifying, and we did as well against Bahrain and definitely against Uruguay. That'll have to clean up, and Canada will have to do a much better job against that against Japan, and definitely at the World Cup as well. So this is the perfect chance for Canada to per prepare for a Belgium and Croatian transition, because Japan is very clinical and very good at pressing and doing it for a solid 90 minutes. So that's going to be a huge thing for Canada to look forward to tomorrow, but as well, Canada is going to have to hit on the break very well. This is going to have to be where we're clinical in front of net. We're very crucial when we get our chances and we have to bury them and take them. That's why this match is great for the World Cup and it is great for us to get warmed up because we're only going to get few and far chances against Belgium and Croatia and we probably will as well, as well against Japan. Like I said, US are a great side in CONCACAF. They're a great team as well in the world sitting in 16th in FIFA rankings. They only had four chances and one big chance against Japan. That shows how good Japan is defensively as well. Like I said, def Japan has a lot of experience as well in this team, and it's all in the back line. The likes of Yoshida is a quality defender and a great, great Japanese international. The likes of Yuto Nagatomo and also the likes of Sakai, the right back, who also plays center back for Japan. They have a great squad for the experience and quality, and defensively, they're unbelievable as well as pressing and playing on that transition. As I think Canada will line up, of course, in my 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1, as both those formations are very interchangeable. 
I could see John Herman also going with the 4-4-2 as he did a long lot of times in qualifying for Canada when we had set up a bit more defensively to hit teams in the counter in a 4-4-2. But I think he's going to want to go with a three-man midfield. As we saw against Uruguay, that midfield got run down quite a bit. We weren't quick enough. We weren't fast enough on transition. I think he's going to go with a three-man midfield heading into the World Cup. And this match is definitely, like he said, to prepare for that Belgium and Croatia match. So I see him going with a three-man midfield. So I got Milan Boyan in net. The likes of Alistair Johnson at right back, Kamal Miller, Steven Vittoria, and Samuel Adekubi. In the midfield, I'm going to go with Atiba Hutchinson. I think he's going to start, but we're going to see how much he gets in the match. And I think he could get subbed out for Samuel Piet at halftime, seeing how far he can go in the match with his fitness. And it's going to be interesting to see if Stefan Estacchio plays. Estacchio has had some fitness concerns, of course, being talked about by John Herman and media, as well as, as, well as Alfonso Davies, as we all know of his recent injury. So it's going to be interesting to see how much those guys can get. I think they're going to go a solid 60, 65 minutes and then get subbed out. I got Stefan Estacchio starting, probably getting subbed out for the likes of Liam Fraser, who's for me an exact exact replacement for Stefan Estacchio. And beside him in the midfield, I'm going to have Jonathan Osorio playing in that midfield. So I think a three-man midfield of Atiba, Jonathan Osorio, and Stefan Estacchio. Up front, Jonathan David, alongside of Alfonso Davies and Tejon Buchanan. I think we're going to have to be able to work on changing formations very well, as well as we score early. I think Herdman could change the formation, set up a little bit more defensively, maybe switch that three-man back line as well to play a five in the back. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how we cope with the pressure of being pressed, playing a bit on the back foot, because it's going to be very interesting against a top quality nation. We're going to be able to have to cope with that pressing from Japan. But like I said, guys, Japan is a very good outfit, which I want to talk about right now. If you look at Japan's squad, it is littered and filtered with quality. Of course, Takumi Minamino, who everyone probably knows from his time at Liverpool. You also have Matoma, who is currently at Brighton, getting a few appearances right now, who has looked pretty good in the Premier League. You have also Doan, who also plays in the Bundesliga. You have Endo in the midfield, who plays for Stuttgart. You have a very good side, as well as the likes of Ito on the wings. Uh, Taifusa Kubo, you have also some some of those Celtic lads up top and a very good and experienced back line that they truly have as well. And you saw when they played the U.S., like I said, 43% possession, 15 shots, two big chances, and they didn't really control possession, but they also were pressing a lot. When you look at the stats, you can see uh, fouls committed. U.S. committed three fouls to the likes of Japan 16. So you can truly see the pressing that was happening there. Sometimes you have to foul a bit on the back foot just to take that to slow down the game if you miss time a challenge. So they're a very high pressing team. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see how they line up against Canada. I expect it to be a 4-2-3-1. And they do have some injury concerns. It's a very interesting side from Japan right now. So they're all up in arms to see who truly starts for them. Of course, their X-Factor player up top is is uh, Eintracht Frankfurt's uh, Daichi Kamada, who is a truly brilliant player, and Sean against the USA was probably his man was probably man of the match for them in that match as well. So I expect this to be a very good match for Canada, probably their biggest test like going into this. Japan is an unbelievable side. Of course, their standout in the back line is Tommy Yasu from Arsenal, who is a brilliant center back or right wing back, a very versatile defender. Like I said, the rest of their back line, very experienced, all been to World Cups, so like Sakai, Yoshida, Negatomo. They have a great back line with a lot of experience who can handle that sort of system. But I also think we can get to them to act defensively. We're very fast up front. We're very speedy on the pace with Alfonso, uh, Tejon, likes of Alistair Johnston whipping in balls. I think it's going to be a very interesting time to see how Canada counterattacks. I also expect Canada to give Japan the ball a lot and us to sit back defensively and then go at them. It's going to be a very interesting match tomorrow between Canada and Japan. Let me know your guys' score predictions, lineups, how you guys think Japan's going to look, and also your guys' thoughts on what John Herbman said. Go check it out at Peter Galindo's Twitter. It's very interesting, very telling what he said in that interview. Japan smashed USA. Let's hope we can repeat that and smash Japan today and get it back for CONCACAF tomorrow. Let me know what you guys think about my Japan preview for tomorrow's match. So let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.